Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we wanted to make sort of an introductory video, and we're gonna talk about what is Active Directory and group policy. We've got several hands-on learning videos covering both Active Directory domain services and a lot of other server configurations on Windows Server 2022, 2019, etc. If you wanna see any of those videos, check the playlist link in the description below. Now, before we get started on today's video topic, if you're interested in purchasing Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software, we'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to help you guys take notes or follow along, we're uh, referring to a PowerPoint created by Microsoft. So this is an official PowerPoint and it's basically an introduction to Active Directory. So we'll have the slides pulled up and we'll kind of talk through each of them before we move on to group policy. All right, so introduction to Active Directory. So we're gonna talk about what it is and what the roles are primarily. So Active Directory is a collection of services, server roles and features used to manage identity and access four and two resources on a network. So we can see here, and these are things that we have uh, shown you guys previously in Windows Server. The Active Directory is uh, the centralized management for all of these services. We have uh, rights management services, federation services, domain services, certificate services, and LDS uh, lightweight directory services. So again, the key kind of takeaway here is that Active Directory is used to manage identity and access four and two resources on a network. So I hope that's making sense. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, again, here are the roles listed out if you wanted to pause the video and write down those. All right, so what is Active Directory Domain Services? Well, a directory service is both the directory information source and the service chat that makes the information available and usable. Uh, I like the reference of a phone book here. So we can see in the domain services, this is the centralized, in this case, uh, service. We have the Windows client. So this might be a Windows 10 computer. We've got Windows server. We have Windows user. And then we can see email servers, applications, and network devices. All right, we'll go to the next slide here. So what does Active Directory domain services do? Quite simply, it's scalable, secure, and manageable infrastructure for user and resource management. We're gonna be storing and managing information about network resources. We're gonna be providing support for directory-enabled applications, such as Microsoft Exchange Server, and it allows for that centralized management. All right, what is Active Directory Certificate Services? Uh, this is the Microsoft implementation of public key infrastructure, otherwise known as PKI. Uh, we can see we have a diagram here on our right side. This is a set of hardware, software, people, policies, and procedures needed to create, manage, distribute, use, store, and revoke digital certificates. All right, and basically what this does is it provides customizable services for issuing and managing those certificates. Uh, here we can see some specific properties of the service. And then next up, what is Active Directory Federation Services? This is a software component that facilitates the cross-organizational access of systems and applications. And basically, this provides simplified secure identity federation and web single sign-on, otherwise known as SSO, capabilities. So we're enabling the creation of trust relationships between organizations, uh, we're providing access to applications between organizations, and we're providing single sign-on between two different directories for web-based applications. All right, and then we have rights management services, and this is an information protection technology that works with applications to safeguard digital information. This is gonna allow uh, in both individuals and admins to specify access permissions to documents, workbooks, presentations. So we might use this to prevent sensitive information from being printed, forwarded, or copied by anyone that doesn't have access. And then we're enforcing access and usage restrictions regardless of where the information is located. All right, and then uh, lastly, we have LDS, otherwise known as Lightweight Directory Services. And this is a hierarchical file-based directory store. It is both the directory information source and the service that makes the information available and usable. All right, LDAP, otherwise known as Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This is a directory service that provides flexible support for directory-enabled applications without the dependencies of domain-related restrictions of ADDS. 
All right, so with this, we're able to provide directory services for directory-enabled apps without incurring the overhead of domains and forests. And also, we have no requirement for a single schema throughout a forest. All right, so that's gonna sum up the Active Directory portion of the video. Hopefully, we went through all of that in a manner that was understandable. If y'all have any specific questions or video topics on understanding Active Directory, drop those in the comment section below, and we're happy to consider that. Let's go ahead and move on to group policy. All right, so we're now on to the group policy portion. We're using a PowerPoint here that was uploaded to slideplayer.com. We'll leave the link for this and the other earlier PowerPoint in the description box below. All right, so the first slide is understanding the benefits of group policy. So users can access their files even when network connectivity is intermittent. This is accomplished by using folder redirection and offline files. On top of that, the user environment can be set up to be consistent regardless of which workstation or location is used as the login computer. User files can be redirected to a server location that allows them to be backed up regularly, saving users from the headaches of lost data due to the failure of their workstations. This is a key component of group policy. Uh, and then lastly, applications that become damaged or need to be updated can be maintained automatically. All right, continuing on, admins have control over centralized configuration of user settings, application installation, and desktop configuration. Problems due to missing application files and other minor application errors often can be alleviated by the automation of application repairs. Centralized backup of user files eliminates the need and cost of trying to recover files from a damaged drive. And then the need to manually make security changes is reduced by the rapid deployment of new settings through the group policy. So we have some defining architecture. We have local GPOs. Uh, GPO is group policy objects. Domain GPOs, starter GPOs, group policy container, GPC, and group policy template, GPT. Here's a slide on how to view the group policy uh, container. So we'll pause this for just a moment in case you want to screenshot or write this down. And then here is another little visual diagram of that. All right, moving on, we have group policy templates. Again, we'll pause the screen for you guys. Here is how to create and link a GPO to an OU. All right, here's another slide for that. And one more slide. And then moving on, we're gonna talk about configuring group policy settings. So we have software settings, Windows settings, and administrative templates. So here is the group policy processing. We have local, site, domain, and OU policies. So when a computer is initialized during startup, it establishes a secure link between the computer and a domain controller. Then the computer obtains a list of GPOs to be applied. Computer configuration settings are applied synchronously during computer startup before the logon dialog box is presented to the user. Any startup disks set to run during computer startup are processed. These scripts also run synchronously and have a default timeout of 600 seconds to complete. When the computer configuration scripts and startup scripts are complete, the user is prompted to press Control Alt Delete to log on. Upon successful authentication, the user profile is loaded based on the group policy settings in effect. A list of the GPS specific for the user is obtained from the domain controller. And then unlike the startup scripts, these scripts run asynchronously by default. The user's desktop appears after all policies and scripts have been processed. Here are the exceptions uh, that we can configure to the GPO processing. All right, and then here's um, just kind of a summary of what we learned. In Active Directory, group policies can be assigned to sites, domains, and OUs. By default, there is one local policy per computer. Local policy settings are overwritten by Active Directory policy settings. All right, group policy content is stored in an Active Directory GPC and GPT. Whereas the GPC can be seen using the advanced features view in the Active Directory users and computers, the GPT is a GUID named folder located in this folder. The default domain policy and the default domain controller policy are created by default when Active Directory is installed. The Group Policy Management Console is the tool used to create and modify group policies and their settings. All right, continuing on, GPO nodes contain three subnodes, including software settings, window settings, and admin templates. Administrative templates are XML files with the .admx file extension. The order of group policy processing can be remembered using the acronym LSDOU. Local policies are processed first, followed by site, domain, and finally OU policies. Uh, this order is an important part of understanding how to implement group policies for an object. All right, and then for the last slide here, group policies applied to parent containers are inherited by all child containers and objects. Inheritance can be altered by using the enforce 
block policy inheritance or loopback settings. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have additional questions on either Active Directory or group policy, drop those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, we highly encourage specific video topic ideas if you have any, and we would love to consider creating those videos. Lastly, again, we wanted to say if you're interested in genuine Microsoft software, that being Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.